Hi everyone, I'm Stan Mallow. Welcome to Paranormal Yacker. My guest in today's show is avid Sasquatch investigator and researcher Thomas Steinberg. He has authored three books on Sasquatch and co-authored two others. Thomas Steinberg, welcome to Paranormal Yacker. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to be here. When did you first develop an interest, Thomas, in Sasquatch and what was the driving force uh, behind your decision to actively search for it and prove its existence? Back in the mid-1960s, I was what you would call a pretty strange little kid. I remember it all began for me when my parents brought home a large hardcover Reader's Digest book for me and my sister, who's two years younger than I am, for education purposes. And in this book, they had paragraphs on everything you could think of, volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes. And of course, it had a beautiful section on, on the age of the dinosaurs with all the old paintings and all the old theories that uh, basically uh, paleontology has proven to were not true, you know, T-Rex standing upright, walking and dragging his tail and, and stuff like that. And right in the middle of that dinosaur session was a little two-page article with the usual three blurry pictures and was entitled The Thing in Loch Ness. I don't know, I must have read that 80 times. It's kind of like through a switch. So bothering my parents, they eventually got me a library card and I knew at a very young age I was never going to move to Scotland. And reading about trying to find out more information on this particular mission, I started reading about this thing in Western Canada called the Sasquatch. You know, States, they called it Bigfoot. I don't know. It was like a, a switch went up. But I think what really did it was not too long after that, on a school night when I should have been asleep in bed, I came down into the living room. My parents were watching an old movie, the old black and white TV. And it was that old. And my mother saying, oh, no, 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 he can't watch this. He'll have nightmares. And my father saying, oh, come on, the lad's interest in this sort of thing. Let him, we'll let him watch it. My father won that argument. And I'm sure he's regretted that victory ever since. And what was playing was that old Hammer horror film starring Peter Cushing, the abominable snowman with the Himalayas. And that just uh, was Sasquatch from that day forward. And what really got me in research is when I was posted to Curry Barracks in Calgary, saw the Rocky Mountains for the first time. And I thought to myself, there's no wall between British Columbia and Western Alberta. If they've been seen in Eastern BC, they got to be seen here too. So what I did is I took ads out in the local media. And it was very simply worded, Sasquatch. Anyone who believes they've had, they have had a sighting of this creature, please contact Thomas Neighbor on the phone number. And I didn't expect much of a result, but I tell you, my phone was ringing on all almost a daily basis. And through that, I met the late Vladimir Markotic, professor of anthology, zoology and archaeology at the University of Calgary. He kind of took me under his wing and we kind of became unofficial partners. I did the field research and he did the academic stuff. You've traveled thousands of miles in your search for Sasquatch evidence. From all the places you visited, you felt the answer would be found in British Columbia, Canada. And that's where you now reside. Uh, why do you feel British Columbia holds the answers to proving the existence of Sasquatch. At the time when I started, it was basically assumed that the Sasquatch or Bigfoot, as they call it in the United States, was a Pacific Northwest phenomenon. That's Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. So I thought anywhere west of the Rocky Mountain foothill. I had never heard of any incidents in the eastern part of the continent until after I moved out west. All those years growing up in Ontario, I only heard of one incident. But when I got out here, suddenly they were out all over the place. And I have to admit, I was rather agnostic to anything reported in the eastern part of the continent right up until the mid 1990s. Fellow researchers like Don Keating in Ohio and, and uh, Diane Stocking Nice in Florida, I had to admit what they were coming up with sounded pretty good. Altered my opinion on that. I think now, basically in North America, in wilderness areas, if you've got a thriving population of black bears, you can have a Sasquatch. Well, reports continue to this day of Sasquatch sightings in the forest mountains of Alberta, Canada is Wild Rose Province. Many Albertans believe that these mysterious creatures of the forest do exist. So do you. What has led you to come to that belief? I'm 90% convinced that the Sasquatch does exist. The result of 42 years of 1978, I started, so I guess, yeah, that's about 42 years now. Interviewing witnesses who seem legit really aren't looking for publicity. You always got to remember when you're interviewing a witness, there's only three possibilities. One, they saw a Sasquatch. Two, they mistook something or someone for a sacrifice, or three, they're lying. I don't personally believe that all these people are, are just out or outright lying. And some of them actually really believe they have seen something. Of course, through the years doing work with all my friends and colleagues, like the late John Green, the late Randy DeHand, and the late Grover Cran, there has to be an answer to this. But I got to admit, it really bothers me that since the PG film of October 20, 1967, something of that quality has not happened since. When you go on your expeditions and 
search of Sasquatch creatures. Uh, Thomas, do you wear any special clothing and carry any special equipment or supplies? Well, I, I'm basically still old school, and I'm not. I've never been a rich man, so I can't afford the fancy toys so many times. I basically carry my cameras and my recording devices, and and I just wear general outdoor clothing. I don't get all gilly suited up like some sniper somewhere and, and pretend to be a member of Joint Task Force Two or the Green Berets in the United States or something like that. No, I just go out and I'm looking for evidence of the creature's presence. And when I go to a, a reported sighting location, I'm looking for anything that may back up what the witness claimed to have seen, i.e. footprints, dogs of hair, things like that. I'm always hoping to get a sighting of the thing myself. All the years of looking, I may have only had a fleeting glimpse myself once. Should someone come upon a Sasquatch creature while in the woods, is there any protocols you recommend they follow so as not to disturb or alarm them? Basically, if you, if you see a Sasquatch in the woods, if you can get over the shock and manage to get some photographic evidence to back it up, that's basically the best protocol I can, I can recommend. In the book, Sasquatch in British Columbia, a chronology of incidents and important events, you co-wrote with uh, Christopher Murphy, the earliest fossilized indications of the existence of a creature are included. Were you able to somehow date how far back in time they existed and were the fossils found in the forest or elsewhere? Mostly it comes from China, but I think you were referring to Gigantopithecus black eye. According to the theory, it was a, a large ape that existed as recently as about 10,000 years ago. The late Grover Kratz had the theory based on the spread of the jaw. As a matter of fact, that's the Gigantopithecus skull you see over my shoulder there. It's a theory that because of the spread of the jaw, there was at times a good amount of time that Gigantopithecus black eye was an erect biped because his jaw is very wide. It's more like a human jaw, whereas you look at gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees, they have very narrow jaw because they are quadruped. Their heads are, their, they walk, their knuckle walks, their heads are hung forward, not on top of the body. Gigantopithecus seems to indicate that based on the fossil remains of the skull, that it was an erect biped. So the theory is that maybe Gigantopithecus crossed over what was the barren land bridge between Asia and Alaska and migrated here slowly through time the same way the ancestors of our First Nation people did, or Native Americans did. Sasquatch is simply this species continuing. Now, that is only a theory, a working hypothesis, because we have never found physical or fossilized remains of Gigantopithecus on this side of the Pacific Ocean. In your book, Sasquatch in Alberta, Bigfoot in Wild Rose Country, you cover over 20 years of investigations. Could you highlight one or two of them for our viewers? The best ones in, uh, in the province of Alberta would have to be, in my opinion, the 1969 incident at the Bighorn Dam, where five workmen who were working on the, the water pumping station claimed this extremely tall figure was walking along the ridge of the high ridge bank in front of them. One man went rushing back to his supervisor to try and get, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's kind of like a, a telescope to go in, but he got into a conversation what he wanted. It was, so he came back and by that time the figure had walked all along the length of the ridge and back and then it disappeared. Well, three of the men decided to go up to where it was. And the men who stayed below were amazed that their friends were only half the height of whatever they were looking at. And I might point out the reason I find this interesting is because in that part of Alberta, between 1948 and 1984, there was a rash of extremely tall hybrids. You had normal hybrid reports in between, you know, six, seven, eight feet tall. But for some reason, all the extreme tall reports in Alberta were in the same general area, and they stopped in 1984, whereas normal hybrid reports carried on. That always struck me as interesting. The next best case in Alberta would have to be the Crandall Campground incident of the May long weekend of 1988, where uh, four uh, people in the site C3 in the Crandall campground encountered this thing and they did the rare thing. They actually went to the park warden's office and, and insisted on making out a written report on it. The wardens were all, oh, by the way, in Canada the national parks are called wardens, not rangers. The warden's office was perfectly willing just to hear the story and let it go at that, but they insisted on making a written report. And this is actually a case where there may have been seven witnesses because the two men, immediately after this incident occurred, wanted to drive around and try to see it again, whereas the two women, they wanted nothing to do with that, but they managed to come them down. And they ran into a pickup truck with three other people. And it turned out they had seen something strange and they were driving around trying to see it again too. But I was never able to track down who the three people in the other truck were. And you have to conclude that and think, why wow, did these three people in the truck pull off something or just hang around to see if they're the actors for success? That's a possibility. But based on, I interviewed all four of our main witnesses individually. I, I swear it, it, it's a great case. If there's any uh, probability that anecdotal evidence and witness claims could be real, I think this is one of them. Do you 
you think, Thomas, the day will come when the Sasquatch comes out of hiding and they make themselves known to us? And regarding that, is there anything we humans can do to reassure them that if they make themselves known, no harm will come to them? Well, there's not more, more, more than you can reassure a gorilla or orangutan or a chimpanzee. I mean, the Sasquatch answer will be solved when science gets what science has always demanded. And when you ask them that, they're unanimous. They need a body or piece of the body or skeletal remains and no amount of wishful thinking will ever change that. Should viewers of Paranormal Yakker want to order your books or share their Sasquatch experiences with you? I know you welcome that. What is your uh, contact information? You can contact me either by my phone number. It's okay to say this? Yeah, if you want it out there, absolutely. Sure, sure. Uh, 604-826-6150 is my home number. I also have a uh, Facebook page and I also have a, uh, a blog page, uh, www.thomasteenberg.net. Perfect. I'll make sure that we show that. Uh, Thomas uh, Steenberg, I thank you for being my guest on Paranormal Yakker. I wish you success with your books and in your search for Sasquatch. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Stan Mallow, the Paranormal Yacker. I hope you enjoyed the interview you just watched. To be sure you don't miss any interviews on my free YouTube channel, all you have to do is press the subscribe button on your screen.